Asante, asante sana mabwana wangu na baba zangu. My lords. Mabwana wangu. My fathers. Mababa zangu. The mightiest, mightiest, most glorified, most celebrated prophets of the Lord. Manabi waku zaidi, manabi waku walio shereke wa zaidi. May I take this very humble opportunity, my fathers. Hebu ni chukwe fursa hii ya unyanya kefusana mababa zangu. On behalf of the national Council and College of Bishops. Kwa niaba ya jopo lote la kitaifa la maskofu. To welcome you, my fathers. Kuwakaribisha ni nini mababa zangu. To the most glorious super grand maker world expo Kisumu 2019. Katika mkutano huu mkongwa mlipko wa neno wa hapa Kisumu mwaka huu wa 2019. Allow me my lord. Muniruhusu mabwana wangu. To recognize. Ni watambue. The bishops and archbishops of Kenya. Maskofu na maskofu wa bonna maskofu. Wa hapa Kenya walio hapa leo he. Thank you bishop. Asante sana maskofu. Allow me also my lord. Monerosu pia mabwana wangu. To recognize. Ni watambue our guests. Wageni wetu. Guests of the Lord. Wageni wa Bwana. Kutoka mataifa mengine. Walio hapa leo hii mabwana wangu walio keti nyuma yenu. My Lord. Mabwana wangu. Is beautiful to be here. Ni yakupendeza sana kuwa hapa. Is beautiful to be here my Lord. Ni yakupendeza sana kuwa hapa mabwana wangu. I personally have sweet Memories of Kisumu. Mana hata ni mepata kumbukumbu ilam kutana wa Kisumu. Because it was here. Mana ilikuwa ni hapa. That my Lord baptized me. Ambapo mabana wangu mali ni baptism. My Lord and my Father. Karibuni mabana wangu na baba zangu. It's unbelievable. You have to squeeze in, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to squeeze in a word as you are stepping out. Right? Then you know things are very tight, right? Ay. Ay. This is power packed, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Bwana. So rise up so I may pray as we begin blessed people. Inukeni ni kwamba nipate kuomba tunapoanza watu wabarikiwa. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kuu la Yesu. Mighty Father. Baba mkuu. The tremendous God of Israel. Sharpen my microphone. The tremendous God of Israel. Mungu wa ajabu wa Israeli. The Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Baba wa bana wetu na mukozi wetu Yesu Kristo. Father, we are gathered here tonight. Baba, tume kusanya kaha pa hivi leo. To seek your counsel. Kutafuta ushauri wako. To seek your guidance. Kutafuta mwelekeo wako. To find help. Kutafuta msaada. That mighty father. Kwamba baba mku. The blessed one of Israel. Barikiwa wa Israeli. That as we assemble here tonight. Kwamba tunapo kusanyika hapa hivi leo. You may touch us. Upate kutuguza. That you may touch our hearts. Kwamba ukaguze mioyo yetu. And give us the leading of God. Na utupatie kuongozwa na mungu. Mighty Father, Baba Mku, fill our hearts. Ukajaze mioyo yetu 
with the Holy Spirit. That you may open the ears of our hearts. Kwamba ukafungue masikio ya mioyo yetu. And the eyes of our hearts. Na macho ya mioyo yetu. That we may get to realize. Kwamba tupate kugundua. That the Messiah is coming. Kwamba Messiah anakuja. And that we may prepare. Na kwamba tujiandae. In absolute holiness. Katika utakatifu kweli kweli. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kula Yesu. Amen. Amina. Amen. Amina. And amen. Na amina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So can you be seated blessed people? Kwa hivyo mnaweza kuketi watu wa dhamani in the mighty presence of the Lord. Katika uwepo mkubwa wa Bwana. And I know nami najua that there are many people tuned in by radio globally. Kwamba kuna watu wengi ambao wanasikiza kupitia masafa radio kote kote ulimwenguni. And many people by the web Wi-Fi web streaming. Na watu wengi kupitia mtandao wa kupeperusha kupitia Wi-Fi. This is day 1. Hii ni siku ya kwanza. Day 1 siku ya kwanza of the Kisumu Word Expo 19 2019 wa mlipuko wa neno wa Kisumu mwaka wa 2019 and the way it has begun na jinsi ambavyo imeanza the ushers can handle that right? They can handle the, the, the senior bishop. The way it has begun. Jinsi ambavyo ime anza. So much. Mengi. The orphanage in Rabur. Kile uh, ma, makahazi ya wa mayakima kule Rabur. Ask of Gero. The wonderful cripples who are healed now. We wait a wa ajaba mba wame ponyo sasa. There is so much. Kunayo mengi zaidi. But I want you to allow me tonight. Lakini ninge penda mniru husu leo hi. To share with you. Nika shiriki pamoja nanyi. A very important message. Ujumbe wa umuimu zaidi. And I know. Na minajua. That some of you have followed. Kwa mba baadhi ya numume fuatilia. You followed Yaya Kilimani one. Mulifuatilia Yaya Kilimani ya kwanza. Yaya Kilimani two. Yaya Kilimani ya pili. Central Park one. Central Park ya kwanza. Central Park two. Central Park ya pili. And then we also moved to Utawala one. Kisha tukaenda katika Utawala ya kwanza. Utawala two. Utawala ya pili. And now we are in Kisumu one. Na sasa tuko katika kisumu ya kwanza. But what I wanted to say. Lakini kile ni chotaka kusema. Is that there is a progression. Ni kwamba kuna kuendelea. There is a message. Kuna ujumbe. That the Lord has been deliberately administering to the church. Amba ubana amekua akiupea na kima kusudi kwa kanisa. Step wise. Hatua kwa hatua. At one point, Kwa wakati moja, it was about appearing ili, before the Lord. Mbele zabana, and that has never changed. Na hiyo bado kubadilika, to prepare the church. Kanisa, to appear before the Lord. Mbele zake bana. And then, alafu, after that, hiyo, there was sanctification. Kulikuwa na utakaso, very extensive also. Ipia ilikuwa ya zaidi. 
and the way sanctification takes center stage na jinsi ambavyo utakaso inachukua shina la kati in the salvation of the cross katika wokovu wa msalaba and then now alafu sasa in utawala 2 we dealt with the church returning katika utawala wa pili tulizingatia kanisa kurudi to return kurudi and i said nami nikasema that the next time we meet which is now kwamba wakati ujao utakapokutana ambayo ni sasa we would handle tutashughulikia the glorious garment of righteousness vazi la utukufu la uhaki and so I want to announce that I have been faithful to that. And the Lord has brought me here to deliver the instruction on the glorious garment of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I begin giving that message on the glorious garment of righteousness. I want to share on the following two prophecies. That even as you prepare for the coming of the Messiah. You will be aware of the prophetic timeline of God. Utaweza kujua nyakati za kiunabii za Mungu. The prophecy of the nuclear war coming to Iran. Unabii wa vita va kinuclear ambavyo vinaijia Iran. It was in 2005. Ilikuwa mwaka wa 2005. When I was in Mbeya Tanzania. Nilipokuwa Mbeya Tanzania. I had gone to Dar es Salaam. Nilikuwa nimekwenda Dar es Salaam. Held a meeting there. Nikawa na mkutano huko. Announcing the time for the church to prepare. Nikitangaza wakati wa kanisa kujiandaa. And then alafu went to Dodoma. Nikakwenda Dodoma held a meeting there too nikawa na mkutano huko pia on preparing the church ya kuandaa kanisa for the glorious coming of the messiah kwa ajili ya kukuja kwa utukufu kwa mesia after that went to mbea mbea is close to zambia the border there baada ya hiyo nikakwenda mbea mbea ikaribu na zambia kwenye mpaka pale and then the lord spoke with me kisha bana akanena pamoja nami the first conversation in dodoma mazungumzo ya kwanza dodoma and the second conversation na mazungumzo ya pili he completed it ali, in mbea alikamilisha mbea this is what i see hiki ndicho ninachokiona i see ninaona two misai makombora mawili and their tail has propellers like na, fins na mikia yao iko na vitu kama vya kuzungukia so as they go they have those fins kwa hivyo inapoenda iko na hiyo kama ya kuzungukia at the tail end pale kwenye mikia yake I see they have been fired. Naona kwamba yamelipuliwa. And before they explode, na kabla yalipuke, they have been fired. Yamelipuliwa. Yamepigwa. Yamepigwa. So um as they go, yanapoenda the tail mikia is revolving anti clockwise inazunguka tukinyume cha saa and a little slower 
na pole pole kiasi they have been shot they are moving first imekwishapigwa inakwenda kwa haraka but the tail lakini mkia is anti clockwise slow inazunguka kinyume cha saa pole pole and that tail has it's like copper the copper that color copper plated or copper that is the color na hiyo mikia ni kama shaba ni kama shaba ni tofauti copper ni kama shaba two meters makombora mawili and as they come na yanapokuja heading to iran yakielekea iran directed to iran ikiwa imeelekezwa iran then i see the desert kisha ninaona jangwa but at the desert lakini katika jangwa i see a mountain ninaona mlima at the foot of that mountain katika pale chini katika wayo wa ule mlima there is a nuclear plant kuna sehemu ya kinuclear kitu wanasema so kiwanda cha nu- kinuclear okay there is a nuclear plant kuna kiwanda cha kinuclear and the two missiles na hayo makombo ra mawili they come and strike that facility yanakuja na kukigonga hicho kiwanda and the biggest explosion in na, the history of the earth takes place na mlipuko mkubwa zaidi katika historia ya kanisa unatendeka in the history of the earth katika historia ya ya dunia and the fire na kuna moto starts from down and goes so far almost touch up heaven na kuna moto unaotokea pale chini unaenda karibu nafika mbinguni and also very far that way na pia umbali upande huu and far that way na umbali upande huu and in between the big flame there are small little flames like trillions of small flames also na kati ya huo moto mkubwa kuna miali midogo midogo ya moto mamilioni yake That is how I knew that it's a nuclear war. Hivyo ndivyo nilivyojua kwamba vilikuwa ni vita vya kinuklia. That war. Hivyo vita. The reason the Lord spoke to me about that war. Sababu ambayo Bwana alinizungumzia kuhusu vita hivyo is because that war is important. Ni kwa sababu vita hivyo ni muhimu. It's important in the church. Ni muhimu katika kanisa. It's important in the timeline of the Lord. Ni muhimu katika nyakati zake Bwana. I don't want to say Sitaki kusema at what exact position that war is. Hivyo vita vitakuwa upande gani haswa within the prophetic timeline of God? kati ya hizo nyakati za kiunabii za Mungu because if you say it will happen before the rapture kwa sababu ikiwa utasema itatendeka kabla ya unyakuzi then many might wait basi wengi huenda wakangojea let's wait for that war before we prepare hebu tungojee vita hivyo kabla tujiandae so i don't know where kwa it sits kwa hivyo sijui inaketia wapi But all I know lakini kile ninachojua is that when you watch your news now kwamba mnapotazama habari zenu sasa you hear Israel say unasikia Israeli ikisema that Iran has less than one year to possess a nuclear bomb kwamba Iran iko na chini ya mwaka mmoja kumiliki nuclear bomu ya kinuclear And you see also that Iran has stepped away stepped out of the nuclear accord. Na unaona kwamba Iran imejitoa katika yale makubaliano ya kinuclear. And you hear also. Na unasikia pia Israel saying. Israeli ikisema that vowing vowing kwamba wana apa vowing that they would ne- they will never allow iran to possess a nuclear weapon kwamba kamwe hawatawahi kuruhusu iran kumiliki ile silaha ya kinuklia 
they have stepped out of the nuclear cord Wame, they are enriching uranium wamejiondoa katika yale makubaliano ya kinuklia na wanazingatia they are enriching uranium meaning they are preparing nuclear material wanaandaa vyombo vya kinuklia but israel is saying lakini israeli inasema within a year chini ya mwaka mmoja iran will have a nuclear weapon Iran itakuwa na silaha ya kinuklia. And Israel is vowing na Israeli ina apa that Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. Kwamba Iran kamwe haitakuwa na silaha ya kinuklia. They will not allow it. Hawatairuhusu. So when you put all that together, kwa hivyo unapounganisha hiyo yote pamoja, then you realize that oh, kisha unagundua kwamba oh, that war he, might be near or what. Hivyo vita huenda viko karibu ama nini? And then alafu the prophecy of the 2nd of April unabii wa tarehe mbili ya mwezi wa Aprili the year 2004 mwaka wa 2004 when i stood before the throne of god niliposimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu and then john the baptist came all the way from the throne of god kisha Yohana mpatizaji akatoka kote kote katika enzi ya Mungu and spoke with me right there na kazungumza pamoja nami pale pale about the coming of the messiah kuhusiana na kukuja kwa mesia and then among the cascade the many things in that prophecy alafu miongoni mwa mfululizo mambo mengi katika huo unabii is the changes of leadership in Israel ni mabadiliko ya uongozi katika Israeli there was change and change kulikuwa na mabadiliko na mabadiliko those changes are happening right now hayo mabadiliko yanatendeka sasa hivi in fact hata hivyo it looks like they are going for a third general elections in march or something next year yaonekana kana kwamba wanaenda katika uchaguzi machi mwakani So things are happening. Kwa hivyo mambo yanatendeka. Because remember after seeing the changes of leadership in Israel. Kwa sababu kumbuka baada ya kuona mabadiliko ya uongozi katika Israeli. Then the Lord brought me back before his throne. Kisha Bwana akanirejesha mbele ya enzi yake. And at that place. Na katika mahali pale. I was transfigured. Nikabadilishwa. My raiment became transfigured. Vazi langu likabadilishwa. Also. Pia. And then the lamb of God came. Kisha mwana kondoo wa Mungu akaja. So things are happening. Hivyo basi mambo yanatendeka. Just be aware. Hebu ukajue tu. That prophecy is being fulfilled. Kwamba unabii unatimilizwa. So as you prepare kwa hivyo unapojianda be aware of that. Hebu ukajue hilo. Be sensitive. Hebu ukakue makini. What is happening in the news? Kwa kile ambacho kinatendeka katika habari. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now today, kwa hivyo leo I want to talk about the glorious garment of righteousness. Nataka nizungumzie kuhusu vazi la utukufu la uhaki the garment the church ought to be wearing now 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 vazi ambalo kanisa linapaswa kuwa linavalia sasa 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 the glorious garment of righteousness vazi la utukufu la uhaki and that if we are preparing for the glorious coming of the messiah na kwamba kama tunajiandaa kwa ajili ya kukuja kwa utukufu kwa mesia It is all about the glorious garment of righteousness. Yote inahusiana na vazi la utukufu la uhaki. Because the Bible in the book of Revelation, kwa sababu Biblia katika kitabu cha Ufunuo, Revelation chapter 19 I'm reading verse 8. Ufunuo 19 nasoma mstari wake wa 8. He says, Anasema finest linen kitani safi bright and clean 
nyeupe inayongaa was given her to wear akapewa ili avae then he says finest linen kisha sema hiyo kitani safi stands for the righteous acts of the holy people of god inawakilisha matendo ya haki ya watakatifu wa mungu he say ana sema that he sets that standard kwamba anaweka hicho kiwango he sets it ana kiweka finest linen kitani safi bright and clean nyeupe na inayongaa after setting that standard baada ya kuweka hicho kiwango then now kisha sasa you are able to examine yourself examine the church unaweza ukachunguza mwenyewe ukachunguza kanisa so in my introduction today hivyo basi katika utangulizi wangu wa leo I want to look at the condition of the church before I take off. Nataka kuangalia hali ya kanisa kabla ninoe nanga. The condition of the church. Hali ya kanisa. Where are we working from? Tunafanyia kazi kutoka wapi? As we prepare the garment of righteousness. Tunapoandaa vazi la uhaki. Turn with me right away to the book of Jeremiah. Geuka pamoja nami moja kwa moja hadi kitabu cha Yeremia. In our preamble here blessed people. Katika utangulizi wetu hapa watu wabarikiwa. Jeremiah chapter 8. Yeremia mlango wa 8. Once you're there at least you can say amen to me. Ukishafika pale waweza sema amina kwangu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Jeremiah chapter 8. Kitabu cha Yeremia mlango wake wa 8 verse 22 Mustari wa 22 Once you're there amen Thank you very much He says the following Anasema yafuatayo Is there no balm in Gilead Je hakuna zeri ya kuponya katika Gileadi Again Tena Is there no balm in Gilead? Je, hakuna zeri ya kuponya katika Gilead? Is there no physician there? Je, hakuna tabibu huko? Why then is there no healing? Kwa nini basi hakuna uponyaji? For the wound of my people wa majeraha ya watu wangu. Again, add me a little bit so I don't strain my voice just a little bit as I start. I'm trying to test your microphone wherever you are. The mixer people. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is good. He's saying, Anna say ma'am, is there no balm in Gilead? Je, hakuna zeri ya kuponya katika Gilead? Is there no physician there? Je, hakuna tabibu huko? Why then is there no healing? Ni kwa nini basi hakuna uponyaji for the wound of my people wa majeraha ya watu wangu Why did the Lord ask this question Ni kwa nini Bwana aliuliza swali hili That is where I want us to begin from Hapo ndipo nataka tuanzie Why did Jehovah Ni kwa nini Jehovah ask this to israel aliuliza hii kwa israeli because kwa sababu the lord looked at israel bwana aliangalia israeli he looked at her akamtazama and he saw naye akaona that they were going through life kwamba walikuwa wakipitia maisha as though kana kwamba God Mungu Jehovah Jehovah has not brought any solution hajaleta suluhisho lolote He says anasema they were worshiping walikuwa wakiabudu and living life na kuishi maisha and afflicted by wounds 
na wakiwa wameshambuliwa na majeraha vidonda vidonda tafadhali okay thank you i need to move i need to move today today i'm not doing two languages uh, they were afflicted by wounds walikuwa wameshambuliwa na vidonda and in that affliction na katika kushambuliwa huko he wondered akashangaa why ni kwa nini why are they not going to gilead ni kwa nini hawaendi gilead in other words kwa maneno mengine has that the lord placed in gilead some balm je si bwana ameweka kule gilead zeri ya kuponya Hasn't the Lord placed a solution? Je, Bwana hajaweka suluhisho in the land katika inchi. And so, na hivyo basi, this is where we want to begin today. Hapo ndipo tunataka kuanzia leo hii. He say, Anna say ma'am, Gilead was known. Gilead ilijulikana. For supplying kwa ajili ya kupeana the whole world ulimwengu wote the world of Egypt Uli, ulimwengu wa Misri the world of Egypt ulimwengu wa Misri the world of Syria ulimwengu wa Ashuri and everywhere Greece na kila mahali ugiriki and it was known na ilijulikana that if you are afflicted kwamba ikiwa umeteswa wounds vidonda they are oozing vinatoa usaha he says anasema you knew what to do ulijua lipi la kufanya In other words, kwa maneno mengine, you knew where to go. Ulichua ni wapi pa kwenda. And balm, nayo zeri ya kuponya. Is from a special tree. Inatoka katika muti fulani maalum. That the Lord placed in Gilead. Ambayo Bwana aliweka Gilead. Just follow me on this because this is just preamble. This is introduction. Munifuate tu kwa hii kwa sababu huu ni utangulizi tu. That tree, womti, it produced that sap, a raisin like sap. Ulitoa maji, yale maji. Like a gum, it was gumish. Ilikuwa kama kama gamu. and it was so potent it had pharmacological value ilikuwa ya umuhimu zaidi ilikuwa na chembe chembe za dawa ilikuwa na chembe chembe za dawa makali yake makali so, yake it had pharmacological value ilikuwa na chembe chembe za dawa It was so potent, so powerful. Ilikuwa ya muhimu zaidi na ya nguvu sana. That they exported it. Kwamba waliweza kuiuza katika inchi za nje. So, hivyo. Professor Kasipoi, please, I don't want to address you, I know. Thank you. So listen to this now. Kwa hivyo sikiliza hii sasa. If you wanted to embalm, embalm a dead body ikiwa ulitaka kutia manukato mwili wa mfu mahiti tafadhali watu wasikize mahiti if you want to preserve oh, embalm is kuifanya to preserve right ikiwa ulitaka kuhifadhi mahiti a, a dead body mahiti embalm kuhifadhi they took a little bit of that balm walichukua kidogo ya hiyo zeri they mixed wakachanganya and used it to embalm na kuitumia kuhifadhi and then dead bodies could last longer alafu maiti ingeweza kukaa muda mrefu wounds 
vidonda. If you had a wound, kama ulikuwa na kidonda, you mix it just a little bit. Unaichanganya tu kidogo and touch the wound. Na kuguza kile kidonda. And it heal the wound. Na iliponya kidonda. So the Lord put it there. Kwa hivyo Bwana aliweka pale to help them. Kuwasaidia. And then alafu he looks at Israel akaiangalia Israeli and he sees na naona that they are walking around with unhealed wounds kwamba wanatembea na vidonda ambavyo havijapona Then he asked kisha akauliza is there no balm in Gilead je hakuna zeri katika Gilead In other words, kwa maneno mengine, didn't I Jehovah place some balm in Gilead for you? Je, si mimi Yehova niliweka Gilead zeri kwa ajili yenu? Kwani mimi Jehovah sikuweka? Kwani mimi Yehova sikuweka zeri kwa ajili yenu Gilead? And he say na anasema is there no physician there je hakuna tabibu huko then why are my people walking around with an healed wound their condition is not good basi ni kwa nini watu wangu wanatembea na vidonda ambavyo havijapona hali yao sio nzuri let me just explain a little thing to you now hebu nielezee tu kitu kidogo kwenu sasa at this point katika wakati huu In Gilead, katika Gilead, he had the prophet. Alikuwa na nabii. And when he is asking, naye anapouliza, is there no physician there? Je, hakuna tabibu huko? He knew that there's a prophet there. Alijua kwamba kuna nabii huko. In other words, their, their, their physician was the prophet. Kwa maneno mengine kuna yo tabibu ambaye ni nabii. Okay. Kwa, kwa neno nyingine uh, tabibu wao alikuwa ni nabii tafadhali tabibu, tabibu wao alikuwa ni nabii yes so hivyo basi listen follow, follow me on this munifuate katika hii then kisha their medication basi dawa zao for their condition kwa ajili ya hali zao that was being administered by the prophets ambayo ilikuwa inapeanwa na nabii was repentance and holiness na utakatifu did you understand jemu lielewa so hivyo he asked akauliza why are you in this condition ni kwa nini mko katika hali hii And you can almost hear him asking them. Na unaweza karibu kumsikia akiwauliza. Because in the same Jeremiah chapter 8. Kwa sababu katika Yeremia hiyo hiyo mlango wa 8. You hear him say. Unamsikia akisema. That the birds. Kwamba ndege. The dove. Njiwa. The swift, the thrush. Korongo, koikoi. They detect. Wanagundua. And they do the necessary una wanafanya inayostahili when they realize wanapogundua the time is out kwamba wakati umekwisha they leave wanaondoka sam jeremiah 8 hiyo hiyo yeremia 8 and he say na anasema to israel kwa israeli But why? Basi ni kwa nini? Why are you not doing what you are supposed to do? Ni kwa nini amufanyi kile ambacho mnapaswa kuwa mkikifanya? Genesis chapter 37. Mwanzo 37. Genesis 37. Mwanzo 37. Verse 25. Mustani wa 25. He says the following. Anasema yafuatayo. Genesis 37:25. Mwanzo 37 mstari wa 25. As they sat down to eat, 
Their meal. They looked up. And saw a caravan of Ishmaelites. Coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices. Balm. Ufumba. And mir. Namane mane. And they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Now walikuwa njiani kubipeleka misri. So they knew. Kwa hivyo walichua. The Ishmaelites. Wa Ishmaeli. They knew. Walichua. That in Gilead. Kwamba katika Gilead. There is some balm. Kuna zeri. And so they went. Na hivyo basi waka enda. And loaded their camels with them. Na waka weka. Waka weka katika ngamia zao. To go and treat their conditions. Kuenda na kutibu hali zao. Let's move on. Another scripture, Genesis 43. In this introduction of our message today, and remember today, I said that in this introduction, I want to understand where are we working from? What is the condition of the church? Because if I understand right, the Lord, He already placed some balm for the church at Calvary. Hold on. Yeah. So then the question becomes Why is your condition like this church of Christ? Is there no balm in Gilead? Gilead? I said the condition then we work from there. Because the ultimate is finest linen. Bright and clean. But I don't want to go there now. I want first to look at the condition of the church. Genesis 43 verse 11 he says, Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land in your bags and take them down to the men as a gift a little balm a little honey some spices and mir and some pistachio nuts and almonds take some of the best of the land and take to this man you have described to me and among the best in the land is the beautiful balm is there no balm in Gilead then why are you in this condition? Let me read the condition. Let's look at the condition. Jeremiah 46. Jeremiah chapter 46. I told you it's going to be a mighty two days. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Because we are going to enter the deep, the deep space 
of the glorious garment of righteousness. Jeremiah 46. It says verse 11. Go up to Gilead and get balm. Oh, virgin daughter of Egypt. But you multiply remedies in vain. There is no healing for you. Meaning, she has tried other things. Amejaribu vitu vingine. And they are not working. Na hafi endele, hafi fanyi kazi. They are not working. Hafi fanyi kazi. She tried left. Amejaribu kushoto. Tried right. Kujaribu kulia. Tried which doctors. Kujaribu wachawi. Tried herbalists. Kujaribu wale wenye miti, mandatari wa miti shamba. Tried to go to India. Kujaribu kuenda India. Into a garden. Katika bustani. Where all people in the world go. Mali ambapo watu wote uli mwenguni wanaenda. And people just laugh there. Na watu wanacheka tu pale. You travel the whole world there too. It's a garden of laughter. Ni wanasafiri kote kote uli mwenguni kuenda uko ni bustani la kucheka. And he's saying. Kisha anasema. It is still not working. Bado haifanyi kazi. It's not working. Bado haifanyi kazi. So he's asking. Is there no bomb in Gilead? In other words, did I put some bomb for you in Gilead? The book of Lamentations in our introduction today. Lamentations chapter 2. Kitabu chama umbolezo mulango waki wapili. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Yesu ni bwana. Today we need to understand the condition of the church. Leo hii tunaitaji kwele wa hali ya kanisa. Then we can work with the church. Kisha tunaweza fanyi ya kazi kanisa. From that position. Kutokea sehemu hiyo. Lamentations. Kitabu chama umbolezo. If I get it, I read it right away. Lamentations. Chapter 2. This is what he asks. He can teach you what you listen.
verse 30. He says, Lamentations chapter 2 now. Reduce that volume now. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 13 he says, what can I say for you? With what can I compare you? O oh, daughter of Jerusalem. To what can I liken you? That I may comfort you. O oh, virgin daughter of Zion. Your wounds. Your wound is as deep as the sea. Again your wound. Is as deep. As the sea, who can heal you? Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 6. What is the condition the Lord is addressing? In Judah. And then also now in the church. Isaiah chapter 1. He says. Once you're there, amen. He says. From the sole of your foot. From the sole of your foot. To the crown of your head. There is no soundness. Hakuna uzima. In other words, there is no health. Kwa maneno mengine hakuna afya. Then he says, Kisha anasema, Only wounds ni majeraha matupu and wealth na makovu and open sores na vidonda vitokavyo damu. Not cleansed or bandaged, have you kusafishwa au kufungwa, or soothed with oil? Wala kula inishwa kwa mafuta. The other version he says, neither are they mollified with olive oil. Tafsiri zingine na sema kwamba wala bija funikwa na mafuta ya dibei. The condition. Hali. So Jehovah. Kwa ibo Jehovah. The creator of Israel. Mumbaji wa Israeli. He looked at Israel. Akayangalia Israeli. And he saw. Naye akaona. That Israel. Kwamba Israeli. Was looking for solution. Ilikuwa kitafuta msuluhisho. Going this way. Wakienda upande huu. Looking for remedy. Wakitafuta mahali pa kutorokea. Natiba. Ya tiba. Looking for her healing. Kutafuta uponyaji wake. But instead of healing. Lakini padala ya uponyaji. The wounds. Vidonda. They were deepening. Vilikuwa vina vina ingia ndani zaidi. And so the Lord was disturbed. Na ibo basi bana alikuwa mesumbuka. He say, Ana say, ma'am, but I put the solution there. Why, why are they not going for the solution? Lakini niliweka solution pale. Ni kwa nini awaende hilo solution? So the Lord could not understand this. Let's look at the afflictions. Abortions. Homosexuality. Lesbianism. Transsexuals. 
migogono kati ya watu wengine wale wanawake wa, wa, lakini wanabadilika wakiwa wanaume wanaume wana, transsexuals wale wanawake ambao wanabadilika kuwa wanaume na vivyo hivyo kwa wa, wa, wanaume kuwa Aba. wanawake false prophets manabii wa uongo false apostles mitume wa uongo false doctrine mafundisho ya uongo that dresses the wound of his people ambayo inafunika vidonda vya watu wake with bondage na bandeji and yet inside na ili hali ndani is rotten imeoza the feel good gospel ile injili the gospel that makes you feel good injili ambayo inakufanya uhisi vizuri sweet to the flesh tamu kwa mwili and he says na anasema the false doctrine of prosperity mafundisho ya uongo ya ufanisi deception udanganyifu suicides everywhere in the universities kujinyonga ambayo inatendeka kote kote katika vyo vikuu and all over the first world na kote kote katika ulimwengu ambao umeendelea all over the, the rest of the world without the student community the other community kote kote katika ulimwengu na pia ile jumuiya ya wanafunzi na jumuiya zinginezo joining terrorism kujiunga na vikundi vya magaidi some of them say jihadist daughters jihadist brides whatever you you sit back and you're like what is this wengine wanasema kwamba wao ni mabinti wa jihadi na mambo kama hayo unashangani nini gravity upotovu fake preachers waubiri pandia physical diseases ma, magonjwa ya kiasili disability kutokuwa na uwezo and on alafu and on and na, on and on na kuendelea na kuendelea na kuendelea so the lord kwa hivyo bwana the lord looked at israel bwana aliangalia israeli and he said na akasema even in the natural order of creation hata katika mpangilio wa asilia wa uumbaji the creation i created uumbaji nilioumba This is not normal. Hii sio ya kawaida. Why? Kwa nini? Why are you not going for the solution which is obvious even the Egyptians are coming and taking away? Ni kwa nini auendei suluhisho ambayo iko wazi hata wa Misri wanaikujia na kuichukua? And from the crown. Na kutoka katika the crown of the head kutoka katika taji ya kichwa to the sole of your foot hadi katika waya wa miguu wako be wounds be don't fear ndani sana doesn't that sound like this generation je si hiyo inasikika kama kizazi hiki because you say kwa sababu anasema i have already placed in Gilead some bal tayari nimeweka Gilead zeri and he says na nasema everybody knows kila mtu anajua that when you are afflicted kwamba wakati ambapo umepatwa na janga you just step out unajitokeza tu and begin walking na unaanza kutembea one by one moja baada mwingine headed where mkielekea wapi kugilia kugilia get some balm ili kupata zeri that your wounds may be healed kwamba vitonda vyenu vikaponywe so is asking kwa hivyo anauliza what is the problem shida ni gani what is the problem with this generation shida ni ipi na kizazi hiki he say anasema this people Hawa watu Jesus of Nazareth Yesu wa Nazareti the Messiah Mesia already went to the cross Tayari alikwishaenda msalabani 
and he carried na, all your wounds na, and he took them to the cross na, msalabani, and he nailed them there na, kubipigilia musumari pale. then he's asking Kisha anauliza, why are you not going for the solution ni kwa nini why? Kwanini? What is the problem? Shida ni gani? In our introduction today. Katika utangulizi wetu leo hii. And today is going to be very deep. Na leo hii inaenda kuwa ya vilindi zaidi. He say. Anauliza. He's asking why? Anauliza ni kwa nini? Because kwa sababu look angalia. He knows anajua that when you look at Gilead, Kwamba unapoitazama Gilead, it is obvious. Iko wazi kabisa that he has placed there an obvious solution. Kwamba ameweka pale solution ambalo liko bayana na ni wazi. Then why are you not going? Basi ni kwa nini hauendi? Because if you are crippled, kwa sababu kama wewe nikiwete he is healing them publicly, obviously there. Ana waponya wazi wazi hadharani pale. They're blind. Hiyo ni sawa. You know, if you, if, if you are healing in, in the night and you close, you close the room. Ikiwa ulikuwa mahali usiku na ufunge chumba. Okay, unaponya. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Ikiwa unaponya mahali na usiku na ufunge chumba so hivyo they can say wanaweza kusema that we did not see kwamba hatukuona we did not know hatukujua but now Lakini sasa afflictions mateso there are myriad right there ime imeorodheshwa pale false prophets manabii wa uongo false apostles mitume wa uongo even in this city hata katika muji huu in this town katika muji huu false prophets manabii wa uongo false apostles mitume wa uongo inside the church ndani ya kanisa and when you come there they harvest money from you na unapokuja wanavuna pesa kutoka kwenu and you still remain crippled na bado unabaki ukiwa kiwete that, that that you know because that is now your condition hiyo mnachua kwa sababu sasa hiyo ni hali yenu if you are the one who is crippled that you know because that's your condition. Ikiwa wewe ndiwe uliyekiwete hiyo unajua kwa sababu ni hali yako. You feel it. Unaihisi. You know that nothing changed. Unajua kwamba hakuna kitu kilichobadilika. And on the other side, na katika upande ule mwingine, Jesus of Nazareth. Yesu wa Nazareti. Already went to Calvary. Tayari alikwishaenda Calvary. And poured the blood. Na kumwaga damu. And the cripples are getting up. Na biwete wanasimama. And they are coming here. Na wanakuja hapa. And they are saying. Na wanasema. For all my life. Maisha yangu yote. I was crippled. Nilikuwa kiwete. But now I can walk. Lakini sasa naweza kutembea. Why are you not going for the solution? Ni kwa nini auendei suluhisho? The church. Kanisa. Because for Israel, kwa sababu kwa Israeli, how can you sit down? For Israel, ha ha, ha physicians kwa, were the prophets. Kwa Israeli, matabibu wao walikuwa manabii. Giving her, akimpatia the doses of repentance righteousness Uhaki. holiness Utakatifu. and then the messiah came Alafu akaja. for the church kwa ajili, kwa hivyo kanisa, you are bound yenu. 
is at the Calvary cross. And it's still perfect. It is still healing and curing. Restoring and making whole. So the Lord is asking. But why are you not doing what you are supposed to be doing? You go there. That's where we need to start from. Today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is the church stuck in that condition? For so long. Let us begin this psalm on blessed people. Why is it important that we should meet here in Kisumu? And inside this Kisumu town, city, then begin to talk about the glorious coming of the Messiah. Kisha tuanze kuzungumzia kuhusu kukuja kwa utukufu kwa Mesia. And inside that discussion on the glorious coming of the Messiah. Na ndani ya mazungumzo hayo ya kukuja kwa utukufu kwa Mesia. Then focus on the garment. Kisha, on the garment. Na kisha tulenge katika vazi, katika vazi. Why is it important? In other words, why has God sent me to you now? Read with me, blessed people. My son, Randy, be ready. Not now. Not now. I'll let you know when you'll do what you need to do on the screen. So, uh, read with me right away. The book of Genesis, chapter 3. Kitabu cha mwanzo mlango wake watatu. Genesis chapter 3. Mwanzo mlango watatu. Verses 14. Mustari wa 14. Hadi 19. Genesis chapter 3. Mwanzo mlango wake watatu. This is what he says here. Hivi ndivyo anavyosema hapa. He says so the Lord God said to the serpent because you have done this cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals you will crawl on your belly utatamba kwa tumbo lako and you will eat dust na, vumbi na kula mavumbi in other words mavumbini and eat vumbi you will crawl on the dust and eat dust utatamba mavumbini na kula vumbi and he goes on to say na kisha anaendelea kusema all the days of your life it in other words everlasting Siku zote za maisha yako kwa maneno mengine milele. Verse 15. Mstari wa 15. And I'll put enmity nami nitaweka uadui between you and the woman. Kati yako na huyo mwanamke. And between your offspring and hers. Na kati ya uzao wako na wake. He will crush your head. Huo atakuponda kichwa. And you will strike is healed. To the woman he said. And again. And to the woman he said. I will greatly increase your pain. In childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. And then he goes on to say, Your desire will be for your husband. And he will rule over you. Verse 17. Then he turned to Adam. And to Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife. And ate from the tree about which I commanded you you must not eat of it 
Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it. And all the days of your life, verse 18, it will produce thorns and thistles for you. And you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of thy brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from there since from it you were taken for that you are and to dust you will return. Why? Why is it important that we have this conversation? Why have I come? Why has he sent me here? The Lord is saying but now, sasa, when things are so critical mambo ya kabisa, in the church, kanisa, and everybody can feel na kila mtu kuhisi, that this is historic, hii ni ya we have never been this way before. Kuwa njia hii hapo and he say, Nae anasema, within that sensitivity, katika huo umakinifu, and critical situation about the hour then he is saying it is then important to understand that if you are preparing then prepare perfectly well why? because of what I have just read because the Lord has once judged sin and is coming back to judge sin again. The Lord is coming back to judge the world again. He did it before. And he's coming back to judge sin again. <laughs> oh yes. So when you are preparing, you rather prepare well. Because he did it then. He will do it again. Ataitenda tena. Look at this now. Angalia isa sam. The vision of the golden glorious wedding rings. Maono ya pete za dahabu za utukufu za arusi. That I gave you. Ambazo nili wapatia. November 1. Ambayo nili wapatia November mosi. 2006. Maka wa elfu mbili na sita. At 3 a.m. Saatisa za subuhi. And in that conversation. Na katika mazungumu zohayo. I said. Nika sema. That look. Kwamba tazama. Heaven has opened. Bingu zime funguka. And the glory has come down. Na utukufu umeshuka chini. And when I saw the glory come. Na nilipo wana utukufu ukija. He was cleaning out darkness. Alikuwa akisafisha na kuondolea mbali giza. And yet he placed. Na ilihali aliweka. The two wedding rings. Pete mbili za harusi. At the entrance. Katika ki ingilio. In fact, I was looking at my writings, my notes, as the Lord spoke, I've been writing. I found that the wedding ring is spoke way back in 2003. 
So he has been speaking about that event. And he's saying the announcement is clear. Repent. Repent. And turn away from sin. The Messiah is coming. That is clear. And he said that when the glory came, it did not blend with darkness. That is clear. Then he says, the announcement tangazo, that you must enter through this event. Kupitia kwa tukio hili. That is clear. Hiyo pia iko wazi. However, Hata ibyo, as you prepare, muna po chianda, he says, be careful now. Makini keni sasa. The Lord has once judged sin. Bana aliwai kukumu thambi. And he's coming back na, na Rudy, to judge sin. Kukumu thambi. So prepare well. Kwa hivyo chianda ini viema. The vision of the glorious tears. Maono ya gazi za utukufu. The prophecy Unabi of January 15th. Ya January 2017. Maka wa ilfu mbili kumina saba. When I spoke. Nilipo nena. And the Lord obeyed. Heaven obeyed. Na yebana akati mbingu ikati. And lowered the stairs. Na akashusha ngazi. Now they are all over the web. Sasa iko kote kote mtandaoni. The prophecy of Lima, Peru. Unabi wa Lima, Peru. Everybody knows. Kila mutu anajua. I spoke in Italy. Nika ine na Italia. Spoke in Kenya. Nika ine na Kenya. And when we reach there. Na tulipo fika uko. Exactly as said. Kama tu ilipo semwa. And he released rain. Na kachilia mvua. The dust of gold from New Jerusalem. Mavumbi ya dahabu kutoka Jerusalem. And crystals. And I'm still keeping crystals. I'm keeping somewhere of crystals from heaven. The message is clear. That the Messiah is coming. But are you aware that the Lord is coming back Anarudi. to judge the world. So just be aware that he will judge the world again. So please prepare well. And then he says the city of New Jerusalem. Muji wa Jerusalem mumpia. I have shared it. hiyo. The design of the buildings. Ule muundo wa majengo. Beautiful golden. Ya kupendeza ya kidahabu. White golden, whitish golden buildings. Nye upe ya dahabu, majengo meupe ya dahabu ya kupendeza. I have described. Nimeelezea. The changes of leadership in Israel. I have described. When you read Genesis chapter 6, when the world was full of evil, full of sin. Umejawa na dhambi Immorality Usherati Murder Uwaji Violence Bloodshed Fujo Umagikaji wa damu Lies Wongo Then he came Kisha akaja And judge the world Na kaukumu ulimwengu He's coming to do it again Anakuja kuifanya tena Hallelujah. 
He will do it again. Hata ifanya tena. So we need to prepare. Kwa hivyo tunahitaji kujiandaa. In another way. Katika njia nyingine tofauti. He will judge. Hata hukumu. And he says. Na anasema Genesis 7:16. Mwanzo saba mstari wa 16. The animals going in male and female. Wanyama walioingia katika safina walikuwa wa kiume na wa kike. Of every creation. Wa kila kiume. And the Lord. Na ye Bwana. He shut it down. Aka, he shut the door. Akaufunga mlango. He shut the door. Akaufunga mlango. He's coming to do it again. Anakuja kuifanya tena. So that when we now finally get to the garment. Ili kwamba sasa hatimaye tutakapofikia kwenye vazi. Then now you understand the gravity. Basi sasa mtaelewa ule uzito. And you catch it well now. Na utaishika vyema sasa. You have to prepare in another way now. Inabidi ujiandae kwa njia nyingine sasa. He says. Anasema Matthew 25 Matayo 25 verses 10 to 13 Mustari wa 10 hadi 13 He says the following Anasema yafuatayo Matthew 25 Matayo 25 25 Randy be ready my son but don't worry I will tell you when to post it over there Just wait on me Matthew 25 Matayo 25 Verses 10 to 13, he says this. But while they were on their way to buy some oil, the bridegroom arrived. And the virgins who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Are you aware? That he shut the door. And he will shut it again. He shut it. During the time of Noah. And he will shut it again. My Bible they are read. This, these are the words of Jesus himself. Katika Biblia yangu ni nyekundu maana yake kwamba haya ni maneno ya Yesu Kristo mwenyewe. So they will be fulfilled. Kwa hivyo yatatimilizwa. And then he says. Kisha anasema later the others also came. Baadaye wale wanawali wengine nao wakaja. Sa sa they said. Bana bana wakaita. Open the door for us. Tufungulie mlango. But he replied. Lakini yeye akawaambia. No just a moment. Hebu ngoja kidogo. That, that is the Jesus that said. Kwamba huyo ni Yesu aliyesema. That no. Kwamba bisheni. He shall be opened. Na mlango utafunguliwa kwa ajili yenu. Yesu huyo huyo. Said no. Ala kasema bisheni. The door will be opened. Mlango utafunguliwa. Now hear what he says. Sasa sikiza vile anavyosema hapa. It's in red. Imeandikwa kwa wino mwekundu. Iko katika maandishi mekundu. And he says. Na ya nasema. Later others also came. Badaye wale wanawali wengine nao wakaja. Kong, kong, kong. Kong, kong, kong. They knocked. Wakaita. Sasa. Bwana, bwana. They said. Wakasema. Open. Send the door for us. Tufungulie mlango. But he replied. Lakini yeye aka wajibu. The same Jesus that said. Uyo uyo yesu aliesema. Knock. Bisheni. Shall be opened. Mlango utafungulewa. He replied. Aka jibu. To tell you the truth. Amin amin na wambia. I tell you the truth. Amin amin na wambia. I do not know you. Si wajui ninyi. Are you aware of this? That he will do it. If you just go a little bit down in the same Matthew 25. Verses 31 there. 
Listen to what he says. Sikiza vile anavyosema. That when the son of man comes in his glory. Mwana wa Adamu atakapokuja katika utukufu wake. And the angels with him. Na malaika wote watakatifu pamoja naye. He will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. Ndipo atakapoketi juu ya kiti cha enzi cha utukufu wake. All the nations will be gathered before him. Mataifa yote watakusanyika mbele zake. And he will separate the people. Na ye atawatenga watu one from another. Moja toka kwa mwingine. As a shepherd separates sheep from goats. Kama mchungaji anapotenga kondoo na mbuzi. He will put the sheep on his right hand side. Ataweka kondoo upande wake wa kuume. And the goats on his left. Na mbuzi upande wake wa kushoto. Then the king will say to those on the right. Ndipo mfalme atawaambia wale walioko upande wake wa kuume. Come Johnny, you who are blessed by my father and take up your inheritance in the kingdom prepared for you. And then he says, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Wow. Wow. Since the creation of the world. Tangu kuumba kwa ulimwengu. Verse 35. Mstari wa 35. For I was hungry. Kwa maana nilikuwa na njaa. And you gave me something to eat. Mkanipa chakula. I was thirsty. Nilikuwa na kiu. You gave me something to drink. Mkaninywesha. And I was a stranger. Nilikuwa mgeni. And you invited me in. Mkanikaribisha. I needed clothes. Nilihitaji mabazi. And you clothed me. Nanyi mkanivika. I was Sick. And he looked after me. I was in prison. And he came visiting. Are you aware? Before we prepare, before we prepare. Before we start preparing. Before we prepare. Are you aware? Are you aware of this? Je mnajua hii? Are you aware of this? Je mnajua hii? Before we start to prepare. Kabla tuanze kujiandaa. My daughter the senator I've seen you. Binti wangu senator nimekuona. I bless you. Ninakubariki. It's good to see you. Ni vyema kukuona. Welcome back home. Karibu nyumbani. This is home. Hapa ni nyumbani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh you bought the office furniture right? Ulinunua furniture ya ofisi. Thank you so much. Asante sana. But are you people aware? Lakini je, nyie watu mnajua about this scripture? Kuhusiana na andiko hili that he will take kwamba atachukua based on your behavior on the earth. Kuzingatia na tabia yako duniani. Can I say it better? based on your conduct and behavior now here kuzingatia na hulka yako na tabia yako sasa hivi then he will judge kisha ata hukumu based on what you are doing now kuzingatia na kile ambacho unafanya sasa you find a beggar you say can i give you a meal unapata mtu wa kuomba omba unasema je naweza kupatia chakula the behavior now tabia yako sasa are you aware Je unajua He will take what you are doing on the earth now. Atachukua kile ambacho unafanya duniani sasa hivi. And he's saying the behavior on the earth now. Na kisha anasema tabia ya duniani sasa hivi. Will affect your eternity. Itaathiri umilele wako. And the next scripture I have over there. Na andiko linalofuata ambalo niko nao pale. Because this speakers are so low for me this other side so i need to move to the other side so he's saying kwa hivyo anasema the next scripture i have over there yeah, that is very good the next scripture i have over there andiko lingine ambalo niko nalo upande ule says linasema in luke 16 katika luka 16 verse 19 to 31 mstari wa 19 hadi 31 where this man ambapo mtu huyo he was eating well alikuwa akila vyema dressed in finest linen papo akiwa amevalia kitani safi and eating well na akiwa akikula vizuri he was eating well alikuwa akila vizuri and then alafu 
the Lord takes his behavior, his conduct. Bana anachukua tabia yake, hulka yake. To judge him. Kumu kumu. Are you aware? Jemu najua. Are you aware? Jemu najua. That he will judge again. Kwamba ata ukumu tena. Hai. Hai. The Lord will judge sin again. Bana ata ukumu thambi tena. Let us, I'm going to prepare the garment. Don't worry, it's, it's a very long message. Nita, but for now, let us first catch this one here. I don't want to touch the garment now. We must prepare differently. From today on. Because he's saying, Are you aware that he has judged before he took the conduct whether you give the beggar or not that widow came you helped or not Lazarus begging there then he took that conduct and he went there now to determine eternity to judge sin to judge man to determine the destiny of man based on what you are doing here right now in fact what i did not read there is that he said in verse 28 in verse 28 when were you hungry wakati ambapo ni wakati gani ulikuwa na njaa and i fed you nami nikakulisha when were you naked ni wakati gani ulikuwa uchi and i clothed you nami nikakuvika when were you in kibos prison kodiaga ni wakati gani ulikuwa katika lile gereza la kodiaga na kibos and we visited you na tukakutembelea when were you past ni wakati gani ulikuwa na kibos and we gave you coca cola na tukakutembelea he said what you are doing now are you aware are you aware are you aware are you aware that he will judge the world again now I just want to touch on one judgment and then we'll close this and slowly move into the garment. Let me even remove the article right away. This is it. Randy, Randy my son Manangu. blessed son can you start posting them on the web? Uh, or no, rather on, on, on the screen. My head is really out there in the battle. So <laughs> I'm talking judgment. So I'm really on in the, in the field. I'm in the front line. <laughs> I tell you. You can see there. No, go back, go back, go back. Stop you the first one. There are screens everywhere. He says, Anasema, Brimstone deposits. Brimstone deposits. The Dead Sea area, and then he points that this is where Gomorrah was. Then he points there, he says, this is where Sodom was. Dead and then he says, Zohar. Zohar. Alapu hapo nipo Sodoma ilipokuwa. Mmesema zingina pia toko dana. Ziko pali. Hapo nipo ba... Bahari. Okay, thank you. Don't worry about that. Mm. So the Swahili listeners, you're missing out. So, um, look at there. Tazama hiyo. He's saying, this is where Gomorrah was. Anasema, hapa ndipo Gomorrah ilipokuwa. This is where Sodom was. Hapo ndipo Sodoma ilikuwepo. And then Zohar. Alafu Zohari. Then the Dead Sea. Alafu Dead Sea. Bahari ya chumbi. 
can you move can I, don't, don't, don't move let me first show them this article I'm having in my hands he says Anasema, evidence of Sodom Sodoma. evidence of what Sodom that's the title of the publication it says evidence of Sodom a meteorite I think, I think that's the better way to put it right Met, meteor, meteorite meteor blast cause of biblical destruction say scientists uharibifu wa kiwango cha kibiblia wanasema wanasayansi can i explain this to you tena weza kuelezea hii kwenu and he puts the the fire alafu anaweka moto he says anasema they have been doing research wamekuwa wakifanya utafiti and asking serious questions na kuuliza maswali nyeti a city that is thriving like uh, Kisumu like this. Muji amba unaendelea kama Kisumu namna hii. Or New York City. Ama Muji wa New York. Or LA, LA, or ama, Chicago. Ama LA, ama Chicago. Thriving and, and bustling, bustling and thriving and throbbing. Huh? Unaendelea na kuimarika. Or you are talking about a city like uh, Philadelphia. Ama F Philly. Ama unazungumzia muji kama Philadelphia. Bustling with life. Unaendelea vizuri na bubujika na maisha. And then gafla binfu. And then all of a sudden pa finished. Alafu no, gafla binfu pa umekwisha hauko tena. Exterminated. Umeondolewa kabisa. So they have been doing research. Kwa hivyo wamekuwa wakifanya utafiti. Why did these cities disappear instant all of a sudden? Ni kwa nini miji hii ilitoweka ghafla tu? Using technology. Kutumia teknolojia. Carbon dating, which means to take the material there and trace now radioactive carbon, trace the dates. Kupeleka ile chembe chembe pale na kujaribu kurudisha kutafuta kujua tarehe. Tarehe. And he says, they have found out that something came up something like a meteorite, a small planet or whatever, came, just descended, descended above those cities. And then it blasted fire. Alafu kikalipua moto. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, in other words, kwa maneno mengine, that yes it is true. Kwa mba ndiyo ni kweli, God judged those cities. Mungu alihukumu hiyo miji. In other words, mengine, yes, it is true. He wiped them out in less than a day. He exterminated them. He just shut it. He, he, he deleted them. Ali they, they have mali. evidence now. They, they present a paper in Denver here with the evidence. They say, no, a fire, a fireball. In fact, let's call it a fireball. Wa moto. No, moto kama mpira. Okay, Mo kama sayari. Moto kama sayari. So, uh, hivyo, like a small planet, kama sayari ndogo, did not come from left, hau kutoka kushoto, or right, ama kulia, or under the soil, ama chini ya mchanga, descended from up here, ulishuka kutoka juu hapa, above those cities, juu ya yo miji, and then, alafu, blasted them, they even try to draw it that the fire came from above and obliterated those cities 
Fire came from above. Moto uli toka juu. Are you aware that God judges sin? Je, mnajua kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi? And he will judge sin again? Naye ata hukumu dhambi tena. Like a fireball. Kwa hivyo kama ile sayari ndogo ya moto. They say from above. Walisema kutoka juu. And he, and, and you see na unaona that fire just came just just above now above, it just targeted when it reached just above them and then it blasted them huo moto ulikuja alafu ulipofika juu yao alafu ukalipuka ukalipua sodoma sodoma and gomora can you show the next slide please na gomora then look alafu tazama oh you're moving is moving too fast so even the, their streets there they lead you lot's wife how to get to where lot's wife is alafu kuna hata barabara za kuelekea mahali mke wa lotu ako lot's wife if you want to go to see her ikiwa unataka kwenda kumuona mke wa lotu yeah. yeah. are you aware je mnajua that God judges sin. Kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi. When she tried to look back. Alipojaribu kuangalia nyuma. They even put a sign Lord's wife this side. Hata waliweka. Continue, continue because don't have time. Kwamba mke wa Lutu upande huu. Huh? Are you aware? Before we start this message. Je, kabla tuanze ujumbe huu. This is important. Hii ni muhimu before we start the message on the garment kabla tu anze ujumbe wa vazi that you may know kwamba mpate kujua that the lord judges sin kwamba bwana ana hukumu dhambi and he's coming back na anarudi to judge sin again kuhukumu dhambi tena look at that now. angalia hiyo sasa look at that angalia hiyo look at that angalia hiyo It's still moving. Bado inasonga. Okay, okay. let's just so much of that. Next. Mount Sodom. Mlima Sodoma. Even the area. Hata maeneo is there. Yako pale. Next. Inayofuata. Now look. You can even stop there for a moment. There the are homes that were knocked out. Maboma yaliyogongwa yakaondolewa. And they say, na wanasema, the heat joto was so much. Lilikuwa jingi sana. It's like the temperature of the surface of the sun. Ni kama ule moto ambao uko katika jua. Before we start preparing the garment. Kabla tuanze kuandaa vazi. Are you aware? Je, mnajua that God Judges sin. Kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi. Until the homes were molten, melted, they just dried up molten. Hadi ile maboma ikayeyuka, ikakauka na ikayeyuka. People go to see. Watu wanaenda kuona. People always go to see. Watu huenda kuona. What sin can do. Kile ambacho dhambi inaweza kufanya. Next. Inayofuata. Look at that. Angalia hiyo. Mm, look, look, at, look at those look at those bricks, look at those homes. Angalia hayo maboma. And that place until today, Na, not, not even one plant can grow. Na eneo hilo hadi wa leo hii. Look, at, look at those homes. Angalia hayo maboma. About 4000 years ago. So look look look. Yapata miaka 1400 iliyopita. Tazama. Are you aware? Je, mnajua? Look at that. Angalia hiyo. Even the way they were building the architecture of the time. And Atta he struck them and melted them, he molten, molten. And he left us evidence. Na kisha akaiyeyusha, akaiteketeza, na akaiacha kama ushahidi. Look at that. Angalia hiyo. Look at those homes. Angalia hayo maboma. Until now, hadi sasa, nobody lives there. 
Hakuna mtu anayeishi huko. Look at those homes. Look at the Angalia way they are arranged them. Jinsi walivyoyapanga. And he melted molten. Look at those pillars. They had tower, towers and pillars. Kaya yusha tazama hiyo minara nguzo. Until today nothing grows there. Hadi leo hii hakuna kitu ambacho kinamea huko. I need to start the message now. Can you move a little to the move move to the brimstones themselves. The ones the, the, okay, just let it go. Yes, thank you. The brimstones themselves, you see. You can still pull them out. The ones that rain that is sulfur. That is sulfur. Huo ni moto wa kiberiti. Okay, okay, thank you. The, the, yeah, so, so it rained so much some of them remained and exploded there. Ilinyesha sana baadhi yao ikabaki bila kulipuka pale. And if you go and light it with a matchstick it lights. Ukienda uiwashe na kiberiti inawaka. Wow. Are you aware? Look, you can light it. People go and light. Watu huenda na kuwasha. And when they light them, na wanapoiwasha, they also found that this type of sulfur is not found on the earth. Pia wanagundua kwamba aina hii ya moto haipatikani duniani. This type of sulfur is not found on the earth. Aina hii ya moto haipatikani duniani. Okay now. Basi sasa. Thank you. Asante. So are you aware? Che basi mnajua. That the Lord judges sin. Kwamba Bwana ana hukumu dhambi. And he is coming back. Naye anarudi to judge sin. Kuhukumu dhambi. And, and you see oh the skeletons yes the people did, did you show the, the homosexual couple the oldest homosexual couple in the world? Yeah. So the Lord, the Lord ensured that they tried like that forever. People go to see. He left it there that people may go and see. They were caught in the act. Okay. Thank you. Asante. Now. Sasa. What did they do? Walifanya nini? To be judged like this. Kuhukumiwa namna hiyo. You remember so well. Mnakumbuka vyema kabisa. The Lord comes and speaks to Abraham. Bwana anakuja na kuzungumza na Abraham. They have a meal. Wako wanapewa chakula. A reception and a meal. Mapokezi na pia chakula. And after that. Alafu baada ya hiyo as they are going down then they leak to him alafu walipokuwa wakienda chini kisha wakamtobolea siri they said wakasema we are going to strike it tunaenda kuigonga we are going to strike it tunaenda kuigonga and the conversation ensues na kisha mjadala ukaibuka if you find 45 ikiwa utapata 45 who are righteous wenye haki 40 40. About 30. Na je, kuhusiana na 30? And the number goes on until 10. hadi 10. Will you still strike the city? Je, bado utaugonga muji? He says no. Akasema la hasha. If I find 10, ikiwa nitapata 10, I'll save the city. Nitauokoa muji. He did not find 10. Hakupata hata 10. But it was so evil zaidi, to the extent kwa kiwango, that they wanted to defile the angels of the Lord. That is just how bad it was. Hivyo, ndivyo, mbaya. But when you look at this world today lakini unapoangalia ulimwengu huu wa leo Don't you see that we have reached there? Je, hamuoni kwamba tumefikia pale? Even worse, hata mbaya zaidi. Are you aware? Je, mnajua that the Lord judges sin? Kwamba Bwana ana hukumu dhambi and is coming back. 
na ye anarudi to judge sin kuhukumu dhambi as he takes his elect anapowachukua wate ule wake he will judge sin ata hukumu dhambi love the people what to wapendwa i want now begin to talk about the government nataka sasa kuanza kuzungumzia kuhusu vazi because now at least you know kwa sababu sasa angalau mnajua you know mnajua you know that the lord judges mnajua kwamba bwana ana hukumu so this journey we want to start now kwa hivyo hii safari ambayo tunataka kuianza sasa of the garment ya vazi you must now take it very seriously lazima sasa muichukulie kwa kumaanisha zaidi and so na hivyo basi why is it important ni kwa nini ni muhimu to the lord kwake bwana that he ministers to you kwamba hawahudumie about the garment of righteousness kuhusiana na vazi la uhaki why kwa nini a generation kizazi that is so beloved ambacho kimependwa sana to be in this hour kuwa katika saa hili when the visitations of god are taking place in the church wakati ambapo mitembeleo ya bwana inafanyika katika kanisa lata glory utukufu wa nyakati za mwisho cripples are walking we wete wanatembea why is it important ni kwa nini ni muhimu and i want to walk with you today na nataka nitembee pamoja nanyi leo hii a journey safari the first part of the journey sehemu ya kwanza ya safari is going to be a very important standard inaenda kuwa kiwango muhimu zaidi that god has set up ambacho bwana ameweka on this matter of the garden katika swala hili la vazi a very critical blueprint alama ambayo ni nyeti zaidi that jehovah ambayo jehovah has set up ameiweka about the garment kuhusiana na vazi that when you go through that kwamba unapopitia hiyo the entire yote the entire stru- blueprint the, the frame framework ule muundo wote then you will understand kisha utaelewa about the garment kuhusiana na vazi and the seriousness of the garment na ule unyeti wa vazi First and foremost. Ya kwanza kabisa. We read. Tulisoma an opener, an opening scripture. Andiko la kufungua. That said. Ambalo lilisema finest linen. Kitani safi. Bright and clean. Nyeupe na inayonga. Was given to the church alipewa kanisa free of charge bure bila malipo to where ili avae from the beginning right away kuanzia mwanzoni pale tu so i want to summarize for you some very important points here before we enter this phase kwa hivyo nataka kuweka katika muktasari hoja muhimu hapa kabla tuingie katika awamu hii this first phase hii awamu ya kwanza the reason sababu the lord jehova bwana jehova exalts the garment analikweza vazi the garment of righteousness vazi la uhaki is because number 1 ni kwa sababu nambari moja there is no righteousness on the earth 
Hakuna uhaki duniani. It's not achievable. Haiwezi ikafikiwa. Mankind Manadam cannot achieve righteousness. Hawezi akafikia uhaki. So that number 1. Hivyo hiyo nambari moja. Now brings us sasa inatuleta to the inevitable. Kwa isiyowezekana. Isiyozuiliwa. That righteousness that is being celebrated there. Kwamba uhaki ambao unasherehekewa pale as the garment kama bazi for entry kwa ajili ya kuingia. That righteousness huo uhaki can only be achieved unaweza tu ukaafikiwa by one and only one kwa moja tu na yakipekee moja His name is Christ Jesus of Nazareth. Jina lake ni Kristo Yesu wa Nazareth. That is point number 2 in my summary to introduce you to the topic. Hiyo ni hoja ya pili katika muktasari wangu kuatanguliza kwenye mada hiyo. At first I said, ya kwanza nilisema that it is not achievable. Kwamba haiwezi kufikiwa. Isaiah 64 verse 6. Isaiah 64 mstari wa 6. It is not achievable. Haiwezi kufikiwa. Isaiah 64 verse 6. Isaiah 64 mstari wa 6. Righteousness. Uhaki. Is not achievable by man. Haiwezi kufikiwa na mwanadamu. He says. Anasema Again uh, Isaiah 64 verse 6 he says all of us have become like one who is unclean Sisi sote tumekuwa kama mtu aliye najisi And our righteous acts are like filthy rags Nayo matendo yetu yote ya wadilifu ni kama matambaa machafu We all shrivel up like a leaf Sisi sote tunasinya kama jani And like the wind our sins sweep us away. Na kama upepo maovu yetu hutupeperusha. Not achievable by man. Haiwezi kuafikiwa by man. Na mwanadamu. Not achievable. Haiwezi kuafikiwa. He say. Anasema that you are righteousness. Kwamba uhaki wenu as man. Kama mwanadamu actually need repentance. Hata hivyo inahitaji toba. You look at it and you say I have to repent of this. Unaangalia unasema lazima nitubie hii. It's not tenable. It's not achievable. Haiwezi kufikiwa. Haiwezi ikafikiwa. And because man cannot achieve righteousness. Na kwa sababu mwanadamu hawezi akafikia uhaki. In the summary points I'm giving you to introduce you to the topic we are about to handle now. Katika hoja za kimtasari ambazo nawapatia kabla tuende katika mada ambayo karibu tunaishughulikia sasa that man cannot achieve righteousness kwamba mwanadamu hawezi kufikia uhaki then number two. kisha nambari ya pili that only jesus kwamba ni yesu tu can bring righteousness to the earth anayeweza kuleta uhaki kwa dunia only jesus ni yesu peke yake can bring righteousness to mankind anayeweza kuleta uhaki kwa wanadamu to the church kwa kanisa man himself cannot mwanadamu yeye binafsi hawezi then point number three out of number two becomes kisha hoja ya tatu kutokana na nambari ya pili inakuwa the righteousness or that garment if you will basi uhaki ama ilo vazi kama unaiari Can only be achieved. Inaweza tu kufikiwa through the sacrifice that Jesus offered on the Calvary cross. Kupitia dhabihu ambayo Yesu alitoa. Kupitia tu kwa dhabihu ambayo Yesu alitoa katika msalaba wa karibari. Are you seeing how the points can bring themselves? Je, mnaona jinsi ambavyo hizo hoja zinaweza kujileta zenyewe? I've been looking for you. It's good to see you. Nimekuwa nikikutafuta. Baba dono thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you're going to, to talk to Macharia and then we'll meet right? 
Thank you. I was remembering about your prayer. So listen to this now. He says, if man himself cannot achieve it, then only a certain messenger can bring it, messenger sent, can bring it to man. His name is Jesus. Number three then, number three, that if it is Jesus that brings righteousness to the church, then that can only mean that only through the sacrificial giving, worship, the sacrifice Jesus gave on the cross, can the church achieve righteousness. Have you seen how they're building one another? Then number four becomes that righteousness that makes the garment that righteousness coming from heaven therefore is the most important attribute of God. Because he is sending he is sending it from heaven. So he has plenty of it. And it must be important enough for him to send it to you. Ai. Ai. Number four. Number he says Anasema, it must therefore be basi lazima iwe, the most important attribute ndiyo sifa ya zaidi of God. Ya Mungu. Number five, out of number four. Number yatano kutoka na number nne. Therefore, then, ibo basi righteousness. Uhaki that garment you see there. Ilo basi ambalo mna liona pale. Become ina panyika the most important benchmark. Dio alama kuba yamui muzaidi standard. Di choki wango requirement. Amatakwa for man. To appear before the Lord. I mean, you can generate these points. I'm simply going through them and one is producing the other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's saying, out of number five now. Then he's saying that therefore because of number five which said that only righteousness alone is the required standard for appearing before God. Then he's saying that nobody can dwell in the presence of God without righteousness. Leo ni leo. Leo ni leo. I'm simply opening up a conversation. I'm running through some basic issues Nina, so that we can enter the message. Nina pitia tu maswala ya kimsingi likuwa matuingia katika ujumbe. Number seven. Number saba. Out of number six. Kutokana na number ya sita. Then he say. Kisha anasema. That that righteousness. Kwamba uo waki. Better for them. Ibo basi. God. Mungu. Can never make a covenant with anyone except he is righteous. Kamwe katu awezi kufanya agano na mutu ya yote. Ija pakuwa kwamba yeye ni mwenye haki. Kisumu word explosion. Mulipuko wa neno wa kisumu. Kisumu word expo. Mulipuko wa neno wa kisumu. Welcome home. Karibuni nyumbani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to the home of the word. Karibuni nyumbani kwa neno. Those of you from abroad. 
wale wenu mnaotoka inchi za ngambo because it was yaya kilimani 1 kwa sababu ilikuwa yaya kilimani ya kwanza yaya kilimani 2 yaya kilimani ya pili then it moved it became central park 1 kisha ikasonga ikakuwa central park ya kwanza central park 2 central park ya pili and each of them is preparing the church na kila mmoja wapo inaliandaa kanisa preparing the church kuliandaa kanisa preparing the church one step one level more one Kuli, step more kuliandaa kanisa kiwango kimoja zaidi kiwango kimoja zaidi then it became utawala one kisha ikakuwa utawala moja utawala two utawala ya pili now it is kisumu one sasa ni kisumu moja i know soon we are going to have meru one najua hivi karibuni tutakuwa na meru ya kwanza oh yes oh ndio oh yes oh ndio every city must be given a chance kila mji lazima upewe fursa But he's saying lakini anasema that what a beautiful word kwamba ni neno la kupendeza kiasi gani message of righteousness ujumbe wa uhaki and he's centralizing righteousness na yanaweka shina la kati yake and he's righteousness is center na anasema uhaki ndio ya kati of all operation ya mama mama utendaji wote between god and man kati ya mungu na mwanadamu and we have not begun the sermon na tujaanza mahubiri i'm simply refreshing you But and greeting you i'm greeting people kimu sikiti tunawauisha na kuwasalimia watu nasalimia tu watu What a beautiful conference. Ni kongamano la kupendeza kiasi gani? Where the greeting alone. Mali ambapo salamu peke yake. Is a mega word explosion. Ni mlipuko wa neno mkubwa kabisa. On righteousness. Katika uhaki. And he say. Naye anasema. That because of that number 7. Kwamba kwa sababu ya hiyo nambari ya 7. Number 8. Nambari 8. Then he says. Kisha anasema. That righteousness. Kwamba uhaki can also be lost pia unaweza ukapotezwa do you remember genesis chapter 3 verse 7 jema kumbuka mwanzo 3 mstari wa 7 when adam and eve wakati ambapo adamu na hawa let me read it right here hebu nisome papa hapa hallelujah hallelujah jesus is Yesu ni bwana Genesis chapter 3 Mwanzo mlango wa 3 What has happened Nini kimetendeka Say it Iseme The sun is clapping out here right now Jua linapiga makoke hapa nje sasa hivi Hallelujah Those of you outside you can record Wale wenu mlioko nje mnaweza kurekodi Look I think they're seeing they're recording right? Akisia wana record sibyo. That is amazing. Hiyo ya shangaza. There is a visitation ongoing. Kuna mtembeleo unaendelea. 